Hi, my name is Flurry Summers and I'm the creator of the Professional Pearl and Bead Stringing 2 Volume DVD course and its companion, the Advanced Professional Pearl and Bead Stringing DVD. These DVDs are a new chapter for me. Years ago, when I was working in another industry, I took a broken necklace to my jeweler for a repair. Not only was he difficult about the repair, when it was complete, I noticed there were no knots between the beads. What I know now, and didn't know then, was that many retail jewelers outsource pearl and bead stringing repair, so my project may have provided a challenge for him. What I did know then was that I was unhappy with it. And I had the sudden thought that I could do this, that it wasn't beyond my capabilities. I took local courses in bead stringing and jewelry making. Then I took most of the GIA gemology courses. I studied metalwork at the Revere School out in San Francisco and metalworks in Boston and in various workshops. My jewelry was shown in a number of venues and in museum shops and I wound up opening my own gallery where I showed studio jewelry for almost a decade. While I was running the gallery, I noticed a demand for a comprehensive course in professional pearl and bead stringing. The demand came from goldsmiths, jewelry designers, and serious amateurs. The two-volume professional pearl and bead stringing DVD course is built directly upon that course. This new venture, the Advanced Pearl and Bead Stringing DVD, picks up where the basic course stops. I've compiled the advanced techniques I use in my jewelry and present them as clearly as possible. But it's important to note that if you're considering a purchase of this disc that the course assumes that you have basic pearl and bead stringing skills. When I was putting together the disc, I discovered I had too much material and that I was unable to include a chapter I'd done on special knots for pendants. So I developed a fourth DVD which includes that material plus a video I developed describing some of the special materials I use in pearl and bead stringing. I think both have real value and this DVD is included as a bonus to anyone who orders a DVD from me. By the way, if you're hesitant about buying from a small site, we are protected by PayPal and we have our own Secure Sockets layer, or SSL, which provides an extra security layer by encrypting data transmitted between servers. All major retailers use SSLs, so fsummers.com offers all the credit card protection you'd expect and demand from a larger site. Whether you're interested in learning new skills, redesigning or repairing your own jewelry, or creating sal saleable jewelry for extra income, I believe these DVDs provide the complete foundation for a lifetime of pleasure and reward. I thought you might be interested in seeing a clip from the advanced pearl and bead stringing DVD. After teaching how to make endless necklaces and adding thread to necklaces, I describe how you might combine these techniques. Please enjoy. I want to show you how you can use these two techniques in creating a necklace and in thinking through and solving manufacturing issues. I want to combine crystal with large drill holes and these pearls with small drill holes into one endless necklace. To separate the two strands and to provide a focal point, I want to use these lovely oblong crystal beads. The major issue is that the drill holes in the pearls are small, which means that if I use thin width thread, number one or number zero, with the pearls, the knots between the crystals will wind up in the drill holes. They won't prevent the crystals from rubbing against one another and knots caught in drill holes 
especially transparent with in especially transparent beads are unsightly. They will also cause terrific headaches if I ever need to remake the necklace. I'll probably have to ream out every drill hole. A second option is to drill every pearl to increase the drill hole. But I really don't want to take the time to do this. The solution is to change thread during manufacture. This uses the same technique as adding thread. You simply use thread of a different size. So the first step is to decide what threads I'm going to use and then to decide where to change them. I know number three tough cord works well with these crystals and I know that a B46 polyester upholstery cord is fine for the pearls. So where do I begin and end the necklace and at what points do I change the thread? I can change the thinner polyester cord to the thicker tough cord at the point of the oblong. To be safe, I'm going to allow five beads to make the change. So one, two, three, four, five. Here is the first transfer. Now to end the necklace, I'll need three beads. So here are the three beads for ending the necklace. So I'll begin the necklace here with these three beads. And uh, these, of course, will be unknotted. I'll start knotting at the fourth bead. Now to pick up the polyester, again, I'll use five beads to be on the safe side. So this is one, two, three, four, five. I'll make the transfer here clip the tough cord here and carry on with the polyester. So I've solved the uh, manufacturing issues. Now I won't take the time on the disc to show you the transfers. Just refer back to adding thread. But I, I will show you the results.